Mother's resting now, isn't she? Oh, I forgot. A prince lives the past in the past, right? That's enough questions for today. Now please get some sleep. Okay. <sighs> Good night. Oh my god. You can you can feel the pain the dad is going through and it's it's so beautiful the way they illustrated this sort of pain, this immense pain that like a lot of people go through. <laughs> it's the cold of the winter, the warm mother's spring. Deeper the sorrow, the more my heart sings. I didn't forget the lyrics. I would never forget the lyrics. <laughs> Happy Two portrays loss extremely beautifully. I've always liked Bambi 2 because, I don't know, it's just been always a cute movie for me. But as soon as I lost my mother, uh, re-watching this movie was extremely eye-opening. It really does showcase, like, loss in its purest form and, like, the coping mechanisms. And also just, like, saying that to a child, how are they gonna comprehend this and how are they gonna, like really understand that somebody is close to, someone who was close to them has died it's 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 very raw i genuinely found myself tearing up at this movie quite a bit because it it hit a lot of very very close and very relatable sort of notes for me that i I haven't felt in a little bit. I also really do commend the writers on taking loss seriously and how to explain it. Like, this, I'm pretty sure this was a direct to DVD or direct to video sequel. And so they didn't necessarily need to care that much, but no, it, it takes it takes a lot of things serious. And it's it's so strange for this adorable movie. Like I it was so it was so weird. She's never coming back, is she? No. The breathing room and the delivery on this is just, it's so real. Cause like, I feel like I've been in this position before and it's just like mirroring what happened to me. It's. It, it, it hits so hard, it, uh, and I don't feel Bambi 2 would have been able to achieve this sort of like seriousness if it weren't for the slower pace and the boring moments. There is even a traumatizing moment that Bambi has to go through, and it is so interesting to see all these puzzle pieces sort of like build up into acceptance and being able to talk about loss, talk about, you know, this person who has moved on, who has died. Using the framework of the first movie um, to where the parent dies, you know, the mother dies, and that statement of your mother can't be with you afterwards, using that to like, as like building blocks for this movie works extremely well. I was not expecting that. They really hold no punches with how serious this gets. And the voice actor who is doing the voice of the great prince is doing an amazing job just delivering these lines and delivering this emotional experience. To actually move things along and talk about the animation, the animation here is, it's, it's not necessarily the greatest, there is, there is some moments to where the backgrounds are actually beautiful. It's a lot of painted backgrounds and um, it looks fantastic. And there's some scenes that actually really do carry the weight of this movie. But um, for the most part, at least for the first leg of the movie, it's, it's very blurred out backgrounds and it's not necessarily the greatest to look at. Although there are some absolutely stunning shots in this movie, I gotta say, the first Bambi movie really did it correctly. That's when they were in their bag with the animation. Here, you can definitely tell it's a B team. They didn't really have as much resources in order to like put into the animation, but it, it does shine when it needs to. There's also some like 3D elements. I'm pretty sure they blended into the 2D, which was, it was interesting to say the least. Do I think they did it well? Not necessarily, but, to be completely honest, 
this sort of animation, like the quality of it is okay. It's one of those things that it's one of those things that don't really harm the overall story and it does benefit it at times. Sometimes it's not necessarily how quality something looks, but like how that animation can help tell a story. Like there's multiple ways to tell a story with animation. It doesn't always have to be the most beautiful thing in the world. Now, don't get me wrong. Good art is amazing to look at. It's just that like with so many pieces a movie has and the main structure of it being a story, good art doesn't always go the way people think it goes. Speaking of art, the score of this movie is actually very good. It's not necessarily like, up to par to the original uh, score and soundtrack like they, they were just in their bag with that score in my personal opinion but um uh, no 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 it, it does it does enough when will i get my antlers <laughs> won't be long now the way the violins and other strings and instruments are used it feels it feels very old style, like very akin to Bambi 1, like this person really did do their research as far as I'm aware, like it sounds like it fits so well, but at the same time feels very new and fresh, like a new spin on it because there's not as far, I don't think there's too many if any themes that like really relate to the original as far as I'm aware, maybe Twitter painted, uh, Actually, I don't know if that if they uh, sing that. Oh no, they they sing the little gay song. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think the way the score was composed is just beautiful. Like a lot of melodies just work, and the strings they just feel right at home with Bambi, right at home with this little deer. As for the soundtrack, I believe there is three original songs in this movie. Uh, two if you don't include the end credits, but um, for the most part, they are just beautiful. They are sung by this beautiful singer. I absolutely love it. I adore it. It is just, it's, it's beautiful. After the pain, the joy will still be here. There is life. For it's out of the darkness that we learn to see. And out of the silence that songs come to be. And all that we dream of awaits patiently. The way these two songs are used are very interesting because this movie, this movie is not a musical in any sort of sense, but like the lyrics of it and the feel of it, it just, it brings warmth and it also just really encompasses the whole story. It like, it really does feel like a musical type song. Like the very first song, There Is Life, it like, it talks about loss in a way, in my opinion anyway. It talks about the darkness that you feel like, say it's like representing winter or something like that. And as time progresses and you start to accept loss, like spring comes into play and like, you know, you can start to regain happiness and regain like your sense of self. I. I, that's how I interpret it anyway. I think it's beautiful. The second song, First Sign of Spring, is actually just immaculate. It feels like you're almost at the point of where you can heal again. To where, like, the dad and his son are just forming a connection together. And it just, it warms the heart. It feels adorable. It feels... It feels like a healing journey. And for the end of the movie, ending on a reprise on There Is Life, I think just, it really brings everything together and just like, it feels like you're going through the steps of loss and then you're finally at acceptance. It feels, I, I don't know how to explain this. Like, I wish I could explain this better, but like, if you've been through loss, I feel like, I feel like you really resonate with this movie and understand what it's going for. Now, going towards the story, the story, in my opinion anyway, the main story is about Bambi and the great prince, his father, actually learning how to deal with the loss of their mother. There are two other little subplots that really come together nicely at the end of the movie and don't feel like an afterthought to where um, Bambi is becoming brave. He's learning how to like 
become a man essentially and i really do like that i i really do like that part of the movie the other subplot being the connection between bambi's dad and bambi like he's trying to learn how to become a better father and it's just it's heartwarming every step of the way as he starts to grow and learn how to actually take care of his son it's it's something i i really feel a parent would love to show this to their kids there is some sections i would constitute as filler as you know um hanging out with uh thumper and a uh, flower it, it's kind of like boring per se like not a bad boring i mean like a very cutesy and adorable boring but like nothing's really being progressed in the story for the most part it's kind of just like there to showcase that Bambi is still a kid and he still wants to have fun. I also could be wrong as I haven't really seen Bambi, the first Bambi that much, but like it seems like it kind of conflicts with the original story of Bambi. It's a midquel, but like I don't know, there's some things that really don't necessarily fit for the most part, at least I feel. Voice acting is of course extremely different from the original. It's been like 60 years and of course they had to go in a different direction with different voice actors in order to make it work still. And I think for the most part, every voice works. I, I really do feel that. But uh, yeah, this direction that they took for the movie is just perfect in my opinion. Like it's so, it's so strong and serious when it needs to be. And also tells just like a cute and little like story about loss. I, I, I fucking love it. The only issue I have with this movie is definitely the fake out death. There's just no reason for the fake out death to happen. Like, you know this is a midquel and you know Bambi grows up. There's like, there's no emotion to be had with this fake out death. We know Bambi's gonna be alive. It's, it's a little bit of a cop out and I hate it, but... It, for the most part, it doesn't really hurt the story, in my opinion. With all that being said, I am going to do something controversial and give Bambi 2 a 9. I know that sounds crazy to people who don't really have the patience for, like, adorable and slow-paced movies and, like, movies that, like, are sort of, like, not necessarily, like, slow burners, but, like... This movie does slowly build up into a very good message, I feel. And if you don't have the patience for that, I can definitely see it being extremely low and extremely boring for a lot of people. But to me, it's it's really not that. It is extremely streamlined. It knows what it wants to be, and it just... It takes it by the horns. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of things that Bambi 1 does better than Bambi 2, like the music, the score, the animation... But at the end of the day, the story really does drive home a good message and a very strong message I feel from Bambi 2. And I just wasn't feeling the story for the most part in Bambi 1. I'm just gonna be completely honest. You can definitely make fun of a movie's animation, a movie's score or whatever else. But at the end of the day, if it tells a very good story and it does it extremely well, I'm going to be there to listen to it, and Bambi 2, for me, was that example. But, uh, that's all I have to say. Anyway, how's it going, pups? It's a canine, and I'm... I never even knew this was here. Beautiful, isn't it? This is... This is where I first met your mother. Really? Yes. I was just about your age. What were you like? Me? Well, <laughs> let me think. Actually, I was a lot like you. 